Hi and welcome to the 2020 Surface Navies Association's National Symposium here in Washington DC. In our day one video coverage, we're focusing on a new ship design by Ostol, an update on the LCS program with NFC, electronic warfare with Notrop Grumman, and radar systems with Raytheon. Hi Larry, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Thank you for stopping by the booth. What's that uh, new ship model we have here? Yeah, so this is a, uh, a new model that we haven't displayed before. It, uh, it's based on a design from, from Austral Australia. It's a concept that takes the, uh, the EPF that we've been building for the Navy, scales it up, and makes it a more operational platform that uh, we think is uh, of value to, to where the, uh, the Navy and the Marine Corps guidance where uh, General Berger has talked about where the Marine Corps needs to go, where uh, SecNav Modley has talked about smaller, more capable ships that can operate in a distributed manner. So that's kind of the mindset we used in, in developing this concept and, and putting it out here. So. Can you give us, uh, tell us about some of the capabilities of the design? Sure, so it's, it's taking the uh, all the positive attributes of EPF, the uh, the uh, volume you get out of a, a catamaran, high speed out of an aluminum ship. The, uh, we've stretched out the flight deck, so it's a two-spot deck that can handle Osprey, so you've got a pretty significant lift capability. The, uh, we still have the mission deck space to bring on rolling stock. Um, we've added the, um, a more operational uh, launch and recovery capability for, for watercraft, whether it's manned or unmanned. You've got a weapon system, uh, a, a self-defense capability, and a C2 uh, capability all within a uh, 113 meter platform that uh, you can build and deploy in numbers and, and get that distribution of your your lethality and your assets instead of you know on one or two ships so that was the mindset that we brought to this and uh, like I said we think it matches up pretty well with the uh, the Commandant the Marine Corps guidance the in the SecNav and the CNO's guidance uh, that's a fairly uh, large uh, ship in terms of uh, yard capability. Does your facility as of today has the capacity to build such a large ship? Yeah, also USA can build it down in, in Mobile, certainly. So it, um, you know, we're, we're gearing up to build a frigate and, uh, you know, it's, it's similar size. When uh, do you expect or hope uh, the Navy or the government to make a decision on moving forward with such a type of ship? Well, it's, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time. We think, uh, you know, we'd like to get some traction and have some discussions and, and work with the, uh, with the Navy and the Marine Corps to develop the concept. I mean, we could um, complete design and go into construction fairly quickly, but, uh, you know, understanding it takes some time on the government side to define the requirements. But, um, you know, we're just looking forward to starting the dialogue and working with them. What are some of the milestones uh, the program achieved last year in 2019? We had a pretty big year. Uh, we uh, delivered three ships to the Navy. We commissioned six ships over the course of 2019, conducted 13 uh, trial events. We launched three ships, laid the keel for three ships, and then we uh, completed post shakedown availabilities for three of our ships. Right now, we've got uh, 19 that are delivered. Uh, of the 19, uh, I would say that I believe 17 have been commissioned. Uh, in the water, we've got additional ships that are in the water at each of the shipyards uh, up in Marinette Marine. We have LCS 1921 and soon to be LCS 23 in the water. And then down south at, uh, in Austell in Mobile, Alabama, we have LCS 22, 24 and 26 in the water. Would you say that the program is on track and on time now? 
Absolutely. Uh, we, uh, over the past year or two, uh, we've really hit our stride in terms of cereal production. Uh, our two shipbuilders, uh, Lockheed Martin, Fink and Terry Marinette Marine Team, and also USA, have hit the learning curve. Uh, they're, they're way down the learning curve and they're executing really efficiently. Last but not least, Neil, what's next for 2020? So 2020, we expect five more ship deliveries. Uh, by the end of the year, I expect that we'll have 70% of the ships delivered uh, to the Navy and we'll have about half of the ships in sustainment or, or, or with uh, in, in their sustainment portion of their life cycle. Can you please tell us about the NSM uh, test firing from uh, one of the LCS that took place last year? Sure. So. Uh a little over a year ago, the uh, Chief of Naval Operations challenged us with installing the Naval Strike Missile on the littoral combat ship in an accelerated fashion. So in about a year's time, we were able to get through all the engineering to figure out how to install it uh, and, and uh, work on, with all the um, contractors to get the Independence variant ship ready for deployment with the Naval Strike Missile on board. So working with the team, we were able to work through training the crew and getting all of the structures and materials onto the ship in time to allow them to be ready to deploy. They deployed, and while they were on deployment, they ran through a, actually ran through an exer joint exercise and tested out the missile, fired the Naval Strike missile. And uh, it was a great success. Everything got off well. and. Um, the missile flew like just like it was supposed to. So we had a uh, great opportunity to exercise this capability and we're going to continue to deploy this capability on the independence variant in the future. We have the CWIP system, uh, which you'll see here is one quadrant of the CWIP integrated capability. Uh, this is a new capability we're putting together for initial deployment to DDG-51 class destroyers. It's a modular system in design, so it's also eventually designed for installation on large deck ships, LHD and CVN class. And then we've been working on how to scale this down for smaller class ships, such as an FFGX. So the sea of systems been designed from the outset to address the uh, future threat, and so far more advanced jamming capabilities, far better coverage from an RF and overall field of view and field of regard capability than any predecessor system. Uh, our system is broken out between half the system here is for receiving the threat signal and then the second half of the system after it's received provides the jam signal and we break it out between two bands so this is the high band capability and the low band capability. Four of these on a DDG-51 each quadrant so 16 total AESAs are part of our block 3 capability and they all integrate together so that as a threat flies by a ship from fore to aft, it constantly tracks and engages that threat properly to provide the correct jamming signal to spoof it or, or have it go off course and basically kill, soft kill uh, anti-ship missile capabilities, its primary mission. This same set of building blocks can be fit on the large deck ships, the CVN aircraft carrier class or LHD helicopter landing ship class. And same antennas, but a different set of power and cooling and different way it mounts on the ship itself. We also would take these same apertures, scale them down in size for smaller ship classes, such as an FFGX or something small like that. You know, it's essential today to provide that unlimited magazine a soft kill non-kinetic system offers. Uh, it, the gone are the days of being able to have enough missiles on a ship to defeat all the inbound threats that are coming against it. You need a soft kill system like a Sea Whip to effectively uh, fight in today's world. So we're um, wrapping up our EMD capability. Uh, we're installing more and more capability in the, our EMD model and we'll be shipping it out to a land-based test site later this year. We have two limited rate initial production systems under contract. Those systems uh, will be installed on ships in 2021 and then sea-based trials will begin on those units after that point in time. The Navy has released a competitive full rate production RFP we're in the process of responding to. So they'll be receiving those proposals uh, towards the end of January and then they expect to make an award to whoever the winning partner is by the end of 2020.
So 2019 was a banner year for the Spy 6 family. In the AMDR Spy 6 V1, we started the year with a uh, successful test of Vigil and Nemesis, which concluded our EMD testing program. And after that, we got three ship sets on contract that spring, and we got two more ships put on contract this past December. For a total of nine ships now, we're under contract to build for the Navy. On Spy 6 V2 and V3, that's the Easter variants, we uh, delivered our first uh, uh, V2, the rotating Easter, to Wallops in uh, April of uh, this, this year and got that system up and operating over the summer, tracking live targets and starting the test program in the fall of this year. We also delivered one to our facility down in Portsmouth, Rhode Island for additional testing. So that's two Spy 6 V2s that are now delivered and operating and being, being tested. So the V2 is rotator, so that'll go on the, the backfit of the, uh, uh, the carriers as well as on the amphibs and, and other ship classes. And the V3, which is the fixed face, will go on uh, the forward fit of the carriers as well as things like the frigate program. Spy 6 V4 is the variant for the uh, backfit of the Flight 2As. It's a 24 RMA configuration. We built the technical data package for the Navy and delivered that in October of this past year, getting ready for uh, that program to start off hopefully this next uh, uh, calendar year in tw uh, FY21, this October timeframe. So now we're in, a, in a, into production and we're really excited about delivering our first uh, radars down to Huntington Ingalls to support uh, DG, DDG-125. Uh, that'll happen, uh, that's been happening in, in 2019 and the arrays will show up uh, this summer down in uh, Huntington Ingalls. We're also delivering an array to the CSEDS uh, uh, system, uh, CSEDS uh, uh, down in Morristown so we can start integration with the Aegis uh, Baseline 10 as well. So, you know, the SPY-6 capability to do uh, integrated air and missile defense is really a DMO enabler, en enabling uh, distributed maritime operations. By able, being able to see further and seeing smaller targets and be able to distribute that across the network and provide all the warfighters that information really is a stepping stone to, to that distributed maritime operations.